Hello, my name is Ron. I'm Ron Goodman, and I'm going to show you my kayak setup for my real basic $200 kayak rig for fishing and some of the other things that I've built and do for uh, both kayak fishing and uh, shore fishing. This is the kayak storage system. Usually I've got both of the kayaks up there. Um, after the batteries and all of the heavy stuff get unloaded, they weigh about 35 pounds each. And the um, storage system is rated at 120 pounds, so we're good. Similar system for the bicycles. Both of the bicycles are up here as well. Transport-wise, uh, we carry the kayaks on top of the truck most of the time. Uh, I do have a little 4 by 8 foot uh, Harbor Freight trailer that I use occasionally when I'm doing local, but we also do RV camping, so um, the putting them on top of the truck makes a big difference. Once we get them to wherever we're going, um, we'll set the kayaks on top of this little PVC dolly I made. Uh, as you see, most of it's PVC. I had some old Thule pads that I reused. You could use pool noodles. And the wheels are the 10-inch Harbor Freight wheels on a Home Depot threaded uh, steel shaft. The Both of the kayaks are Pelicans. They're the 10-foot Trailblazer 100 models. Starting at the front, you see I've got some uh, battery-powered LED lights in case I want to do any night sh uh, fishing. I don't do a whole lot of that. Then up in the front of the boat, we've got uh, mostly Scotty, a uh, triple holder, uh, two rods. I usually carry uh, at least two spinning reels, some, some uh, with uh, braid and some with uh, monofilament. Uh, the one closest to me here is a 4,000 reel uh, spooled with 10-pound uh, uh, fluorocarbon. Fish Finder is a Hummingbird 5-inch uh, uh, basic 2D uh, fish finder. I've got it on a Scotty uh, head to get it a little bit closer and reachable and also to keep it out of the way of the, uh, the back of the rods when they're in the rod holder. Down on the floor of the kayak, you'll see a couple of cables. Uh, the red and black one uh, goes up front to a dedicated uh, fish finder battery box. And uh, the one on the right is a USB cable that goes back to the back of the boat where I've got a 35 amp hour uh, battery for the trolling motor. Rods are all secured with leashes. Uh, I have added handles on the side for ease of carrying. Leashes are generally uh, attached to the uh, strap of the handle. Uh, a couple of extra um, clips and eyes for various functions. You'll see those uh, throughout. You'll see some uh, miscellaneous anchor stuff. The anchor has a little storage bag uh, terminated with a chain uh, through a roller and to a wind-up, hand wind-up uh, spool. Uh, I got that at Home Depot. The anchor trolley front and rear is on uh, pulleys with eyes from point to point and anchor points or hold points for uh, keeping the anchor dolly in the appropriate position once it's set and then also an anchor line cleat. In the back um, I've got a deeper uh, castable sonar that I was using until I put the Hummingbird in a couple of days ago. I'm going to leave it installed for right now um, and compare the results of the two fish finders. Part of the uh, trolling motor mount is just a uh, one and a half uh, or one inch by uh, six inch deck plank board, uh, pressure treated, and also sealed. And you see I've added anchor points for straps to retain uh, the, uh, the fish finder and other equipment if necessary, including rods. And you'll see that the uh, trolling motor mount is actually bolted with a U-clamp 
to PVC that stuck down into the, uh, the rod holders uh, that came with this kayak. This is an older model of the Pelican and its uh, sealed storage compartment and it was just really basic and small and you could not get access to the inside of the back of the kayak. I simply trimmed around the upper edge of that uh, container and uh, now it's an extra storage container and you see the little strap on the left. Uh, I, I slide that container to the rear and it gives me better access to the compartment for loading and unloading batteries and other materials. I'll show you that in a little bit. This is the stuff that usually goes in the back. Uh, dry bags inside another dry bag. And one of the dry bags, it contains a little first aid, a little minimal first aid kit. And then the 35 amp hour battery. And you'll see the SAE terminator on the left side of the battery. Uh, all of the wiring in the boat is set up with properly polarized SAE two-pin connectors, uh, usually 14 gauge. Uh, the battery also, the battery box has also been modified, and I've added uh, a little panel that you can get from Amazon for USB ports, uh, a voltmeter, and a standard 12-volt uh, uh, plug-in power supply if you should need that. Uh, I usually don't bother with that. I just uh, watch the voltmeter from time to time and uh, the USB ports uh, plug into uh, the USB cable that runs up to the front and that we showed earlier and uh, I use that to drive my Samsung Galaxy S9 phone. Here we see the uh, white tail light for again for night fishing if necessary and the uh, little container in its storage position and you see the battery uh, power cable again the SAE two, SAE 2 pin and then the USB connector for the um, uh, cell phone power going up front up on the inside I have um, sealed the rear compartment from the front and the little white box you see there gives me a um, totally variable speed control capability. It's a little device I found on Amazon and put in a little project box. And I'll show you the, the uh, control in the cockpit for that in a little bit. Here we've got a 30-pound Minn Kota electric trolling motor. You'll see that the mount... Uh, motor mount has a little wood wedge up at the top and that makes the angle appropriate since the fish finder uh, PVC pieces are tilted back a little bit. Uh, the extra wood piece gives me a flat surface to mount it to. Uh, then the power cord for the fish or for the uh, trolling motor uh, goes to a waterproof connector on top of the boat so I don't have anything going through. I don't have any wires uh, hanging over and through the uh, storage compartment. This guy is a little sunshade that I mounted to the uh, motor mount and it really helps in the summertime keep the sun off the top of my head. This is the little control box, again a little plastic project box with a rheostat knob um, and wires through. It's all waterproof and sealed. And uh, I just rotate the knob a little bit to turn on the motor and then rotate it uh, around clockwise to increase speed. The handle motor control on the uh, Minn Kota stays in the top speed, the number five speed position all of the time and all of the speed control is done through this box. Uh, this allows me when trolling to control the speed very precisely uh, down to about one tenth of a mile per hour um, and uh, with the five speed Minn Kota handle control you're limited to about um, 0.3 to 0.4 um, 
miles per hour with the various speeds, uh, with each speed increment on the handle. Transducer mount is on this side and it's a magnetic transducer mount. So it's real easy to change locations. Right now it's in, in the up stored position. Uh, when it's down, uh, gravity basically lets it settle straight down and then I tighten up the little uh, wing nut on the bottom there that you see on the bottom there to keep it in position. And uh, if I want to put it a little bit deeper underwater, I can. I could actually have it all the way down um, on the bottom of the boat if I really wanted to. But then uh, when you're la launching and landing, uh, it's really nice to be able to raise that up. It's out of the way um, and very low profile. When we're not kayak fishing, I built this little uh, rollable dolly. And it's pretty much PVC, including the handle, all the way up. The handle comes out. It's bolted to um, the uh, box in a couple of places, but the handle can come off, and then it's a lot easier to store. Uh, so with this, and the, uh, the wheels are uh, recycled lawnmower uh, wheels. Again, a Home Depot uh, axle shaft through the back corner and then uh, PVC rod holders strap with zip ties uh, for various angles I don't need to uh, with these I don't need to stick anything in the ground to hold my rods everything's right on the box